All right, today we're going to be doing a review of Canon's 28 through 105 millimeter EF lens. Now, for the most part, I'll be comparing this to Canon's very popular 18 through 55 millimeter IS lens. You know, just as a point of reference, you know, that many people should know. The 18 through 55 only works on EFS compatible bodies. Now, the 28 through 105, having been built around the turn of the millennium will work on any of Canon's 35mm EF compatible SLRs, it'll work on any of Canon's full frame DSLRs, and it will also work on all of Canon's crop sensor DSLRs that don't accept EFS, like the 10D or the 1D Mark IV. Now, the biggest complaint about the 18 through 55 is the build quality. Now, the 28 through 105 definitely feels a lot better, a lot stronger, and definitely a lot sturdier. Not to mention, unlike the 18 to 55, which is very plasticky and has the plastic lens mount, the 28 through 105 has the much more desirable metal lens mount. Now, let's talk about manual focusing. Now, the 18 through 55 IS is one of the worst lenses for manual focusing because you actually have to handle and move the front element of the lens you know, with your fingers to get it to manual focus. Now the problem with that is, of course, you very easily run the risk of touching the glass of the lens itself, and also it's pretty loud. Now on the 28 through 105, you do have a dedicated manual focus ring that you can also adjust when set to autofocus. Another major benefit is the distance scale on this lens, which of course the 18 to 55 does not have. Now, talking about autofocus, this is a USM lens, which means this is going to have awesome autofocus. The autofocus on this is silent and really quick. You know, it's one of those lenses where you don't even know it's autofocusing. It's just so silent. You know, it's not quite as 100% perfect as the newer STM autofocusing systems, but it is more than sufficient. No complaints about the autofocus whatsoever. Now, when you compare that to the 18 to 55, which is very loud, extremely inaccurate, and of course, also, is not particularly fast. Now one of the most obvious benefits of this lens over the 18 to 55 is of course the zoom range. This goes from 28 to 105, which is extremely more useful than 18 to 55. When the 18 to 55 was the only lens I had, my biggest complaint about it by far was it didn't zoom far enough, and that is fixed with a lens like this. Now, I should of course point out that this lens does not have image stabilization, but honestly, I cannot tell the difference. Now, I have never missed a shot with this lens because I didn't have IS. When I use the IS on the 18 through 55, it makes no difference whatsoever. I've done test after test, and with the IS on and the IS off on the 18 through 55, it makes no difference. So the fact that this does not have image stabilization should not defer you at all. Now the only two advantages over the 18 to 55 over this lens is of course the 18 to 55 actually has awesome macro capabilities. You can get ridiculously, surprisingly close to your subject with that. Whereas with the 28 through 105, you do have to have a slight distance. And of course the other advantage of the 18 to 55 is it does zoom out a little more. 18 is of course a bit more zoomed out than 28. But of course, 28 is more than wide enough. I would not complain about that at all. Now, image quality-wise, I'd say this has a slight edge over the 18 to 55. It might be a little bit better, but honestly, it's pretty on par. And that's not a bad thing. The 18 to 55 is a more than good enough lens considering its cheap price. And considering you get so much more with this lens, the fact that the image quality is not only as good as the 18 to 55, but often better, you know, this is just a great lens, and if you can find it cheap, I got this for $80, you're probably not going to find it for that cheap, more around 100 120 This is a great lens, and if what you need is just a really versatile option, this is just a fantastic lens.